Well, here we go off to another exciting topic on logs, specifically log equations tonight. So let's go ahead and put these notes in our book here um, on how to solve log equations. So first and foremost, there is that keyword, isolate the logarithmic expression. You may need to use your properties to create one log term. Rewrite in exponential form. And then solve for the variable. Now it's missing one other rule. Number four, of course, we do need to check. And for the, the millionth time this year, we check in the original. All right, now before we dive right in, we better talk about a common log versus a natural log. All right, so you've heard of these before. Our common log is going to re be represented by LOG. That's our common log. Can you have a nice log button? It's on the left-hand side of your calculator. Now, common logs have a special base, and that base is 10. Okay, and if you ever forget that, if you look at your calculator... All right, and you go and find the button that says log. In green or blue, you should see the number 10x on the same button. And that's telling you that it has a base of 10. Now, a natural log is actually represented by ln, log natural. But we say natural log. Now, this does not have a base of 10, you'll recall. This has a base of e. And same idea, if you ever forget that, if you just look at your ln button, which again is on the left-hand side, in a different color on that same key, you should see an e there. Now, one more thing before we dive right into our, our equations is we better know what this log graph looks like. And some of us have seen it on our Grizzlies the past week, and we were a little unfamiliar, so let's get this down today. Your log graph has an asymptote at x equals 0. All right, x equals is a vertical line. We've got a nice asymptote there. Your log graph crosses at one famous point, and that would be 1, 0. And that is a point you should know without your calculator. And your log graph is going to grow pretty darn slow. It's going to be asymptotic, so it's going to get close to this axis. And then it's going to curl up, go through that point, and it's just going to grow really, really slow. Okay? So the whole key to this and why we need this is for our checks. It's all about the domain. And we should know by now our domain are our x values. And notice, do you use any negative x values? Does your graph touch the negative x's? Heck no. Does your graph even touch zero? No. So your domain are numbers that are bigger than zero. Okay, all x values bigger than zero. Another way to say that is to say from zero to infinity. Now, we all know we can't reach infinity, so that gets a parenthesis. And because there's an asymptote, you can't reach zero, so that's going to get a parenthesis. All right, now that we've discussed our domain, let's dive into some equations. All right, so we're off with our first log equation. So check back at those directions we said. Our first step is to always isolate. And again, we've seen that with exponentials. We've seen that with absolute value. We always want to isolate the thing we're solving for. So I basically want to get the log of whatever by itself. So who's in the way? Who's blocking me from isolating this? I would say the number three. Now, how do you move that 3 over? Well, if you read it, it says 3 times the log. So my goal is to divide both sides by 3. So if I divide this side by 3 and this side by 3, I have successfully isolated my log. All right. Now, this is a common log, so its base, as you'll recall, is the number 10, unless they give us a, a specific base. And all I say to myself is I'm in log form. And if you recall, if you, if you remember your little DNA Dan trick, if you get stuck, if you just put them in that order, DNA, and then you rewrite it as, oops, uh, Dan, you get the correct answer. So it goes 10 to the second equals this junk. So again, that's my DNA, and I'm going to say that's 10 squared equals x plus 4. And once I solve this, I'm in pretty good shape. 10 squared is 100 equals x plus 4. So I get x equals 96. Now, just because I get that answer doesn't mean it actually works. We have to check. So as you just recall, we said we should know what the log graph looks like. And that log graph has a nice asymptote on the y-axis at x equals 0, and it grows nice and slow, and it passes through that nice point, 1, 0. 
Okay, now when I'm saying check, we're talking about the domain of our value. And basically, you'll notice that our x values are all positive. Do I use any negative x values? No. Do I even use 0 as an x value? No. My domain are x values that are bigger than 0. So basically, my check is very simple. I'm just going to take this value and plug it in, of course, the original equation, which was 3 log of x plus 4 equals 6. So 3 log of x plus 4, so I'm going to get 96 plus 4 equals 6. And here's your check. If this is a legal number, it checks. Is 96 plus 4 a number greater than 0? I would say yes. Therefore, I know my only solution is 96. Okay, again, it doesn't matter if this is positive. It's when you plug it in, you get a positive number greater than 0. All right, let's go ahead and try another one. Now, notice this time I don't have a common log. I have a natural log, but the rules are the same. Your goal is still to get that uh, natural log by itself. So who are you going to kick out of the way? Hopefully that 2. So I've got 2 ln of 3x equals 18. I'm going to divide both sides by 2, of course. And I've got the ln of 3x equals 9. Now this time, I don't have a base of 10. Remember, natural log has its own base, and that base is e. All right, so I'm in log form, and it's very obvious because you see a log. Convert yourself to exponential. Okay, so I'm saying e to the ninth equals 3 plus x. Now, we've talked about now for a couple days. Don't let this e freak you out. e is just a button on your calculator. Remember, it's approximately 2.718, blah, blah, blah. But you don't need to memorize it. It's a button on your calculator. So to get x by itself, I would have e to the ninth divided by 3. And again, just type her in, and you'll get x equals whatever you get there. All right, now in this example, this is a little different from our previous ones. You'll notice every term has its own natural log. Okay, so what are we going to do? Well, we're going to apply the properties. All right, apply log properties. So here we go. My first property says if I see a plus sign, I can take those two logs and condense them into one because I can multiply. So 2x minus 3 times x plus 4 equals the ln of 2x squared plus 11. Now that we've condensed this side, we can, just like we did in those exponential equations, once we had 2 to the whatever, x times 4 equals 2 to the 3, once those are equal, we killed those and we just set the exponents equal. We're going to do something similar. Once we have LNs on both sides, we're just going to kill those LNs and set these two pieces equal. So I'm going to take this and, of course, FOIL it out. So 2x squared plus 8x minus 3 is plus 5x minus 12 equals 2x squared plus 11. Uh, if I set this equal to 0, I've got uh, 5x minus 12 minus 11. 5x minus 23 equals 0, uh, so x equals 23 over 5. Okay, so this was a very special case where every term had a log, so we condensed it, and then we killed those logs and just solved our equation. All right, now you'll notice this problem looks even different than the previous one. So there's all sorts of log equations, but basically, Notice every term does not have a log, but certainly these two do. So I'm just going to take these two and condense them. So I have log base 9. Okay, Because of this plus sign, I'm going to do what with those two pieces? Hopefully you said multiply and set that equal to 1. So we'll clean it up a little further. Log base 9 of x squared minus 8x equals 1. Now, notice, you can't just kill the log because both sides don't have log. All right, that only works if this side has a log and this side has a log. So now, it's just like we did before. You're just in log form, and you need to convert to exponential form. All right, so you can either say you're DNA Dan, or you can start with your base around the horn and back to the center. 
So I've got 9 to the first equals x squared minus 8x. Set that bear equal to 0, so I've got x squared minus 8x minus 9. So a nice quick factoring, I'm going 9 and 1. Uh, of course, negative positive, so I've got x equals 9 and x equals negative 1. Now, we do need to go back and check, so I'm just going to kind of make a little note over here and watch my check. I'm going to start with 9 and plug that into the original. So if x equals 9, I get log base 9 of 9 plus log base 9 of 9 minus 8 is 1. Is it legal to have a log of 9 and a log of 1? Well, of course. Remember, we said anything's legal that's x greater than 0. All right. So now let's check with our negative 1. I'm going to get log base 9 of negative 1 plus log base 9 of negative 9 equals 1. Is this legal? Am I allowed to take the log of a negative number? No. So I've got to kill this solution, and my only solution to this problem is 9. All right, we've got a nice one for you to practice here. So why don't you pause it, try it out on your own, and see what you get, and then check back with me. Well, I'll show you what I did so far. Uh, basically, I just took this one side and condensed it using my properties. So I said that's really log of 4 times x. And now this is one that's balanced. There's a log on the left and a log on the right. So I can kill those logs. And basically, I'm going to get 28 equals 4x. Therefore, x equals 7. Okay, now don't forget that quick checkeroo. I've got log of 28 in my original equals log of 4 plus the log of 7. Is the log of 7 fair game? Of course, because it's a number greater than 0. All right, now they tried to be a little tricky on this question. That's not hard. They just threw one little hiccup in the beginning. Notice I've got log base 4 of this junk equals 1 plus log base 4 of this junk. Can you condense this side? Do both terms have logs? I would say no. If I want to condense, both terms have to have logs. So watch my first move. I basically need to bring this piece over to this side. So I'm going to rewrite this as log base 4 of x squared plus 3x minus log base 4 of x plus 5 equals 1. All right, so I had to catch that move in the beginning. Now you can take this side and condense it. So I'm making two logs into one. Uh, because there's a big fat minus sign between them, I can rewrite that as division. x squared plus 3x all over x plus 5 equals 1. And so just ask yourself, are you going to cancel the logs if it's balanced, or are you going to convert to exponential? Well, I have a log here, but not here, so I'm just going straight to exponential. So why don't you pause it at this point and see if you get the same answer, and then check yours. So hopefully you can follow my work. I converted to exponential around the horn and in. Uh, then I just said 4 to the first is 4. Put that over 1. Nice quick cross multiply. Solve for x. I got 5 and negative 4. Now remember, that doesn't mean they work. I need to go back and I need to check in my original. Shoot, I already forgot. 5 and negative 4. So let's start with x equals 5. I've got log base 4, I'm going to get 25 plus 15, and that's legal because that's positive, equals 1 plus log base 4 of 5 plus 5, which of course is legal because that's positive. So I'm going to say 5 checks. I'm going to do the same thing with negative 1. Log base 4, negative 1 squared is 1 minus 3. I'm going to stop right there. That's going to get me a negative 2, which is not allowed. So the only solution I have is 5. All right, well, hopefully that does it for logs tonight. Um, basically, here's your last question, and we'll count it as a quiz grade, and we'll check your, your notebook for it tomorrow. And let's say it's out of five points, so take your time, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Have a great night.